The Lake Orion community celebrated the grand opening of a brand new Meyer store that gets away from the Supercenter concept and returns to its grocery store roots. With Township Trustee Kim Urbanowski filling the position vacated by former Treasurer Donnie Steele, the Township welcomed the board's newest member. Orion Township has been awarded $7 million from the U.S. government to renovate Silver Bell, Giddings, and Brown Road, but construction won't begin until 2024. And the Lake Orion Police Department kicked off the Kids and Cows program for the night of fun and games at Blanche Sims Elementary. Hello, I'm Marco Ifredi. And I'm Stacey Calloway. We'll have those stories and more on this edition of ON TV News. When the Lake Orion Kmart closed its doors at the end of 2018, the vacant building remained in eyesore for a number of years. In 2021, Meyer announced they were interested in the property and eventually demolished the building. Now, Lake Orion residents have a brand new grocery store to meet their needs. On the morning of Friday, January 20th, the local dignitaries were invited to take a sneak peek of the brand new Meyer grocery store located on M24 near Clarkston Road. This new concept focuses on the essentials, allowing shoppers to zip in and zip out. So this building is about 90,000 square feet, and we want to make sure that customers are able to get in and out quickly and still have that value, um, whether you forgot spices or you want to come in and do your entire need for the whole week. So um, not only do we have food and we have fresh, we also have a full pet department, we have baby necessities, and we have our uh, entire HBC area along with a uh, pharmacy and a drive through Meyer broke ground on the new location in January of 2022 on the site where Kmart once stood. The Lake Orion location is one of two stores that opened on January 26th. The other is located in Macomb Township. In addition to the Meyer brands you're used to seeing, the stores will have a heavy emphasis on locally made products as well. Uh, we have some local offerings. We have uh, some of them uh, we were highlighting today was Cook's Dairy Farm, uh, Sprout Bake and Buddy's Pizza. Uh, but we have a lot of local offerings. And again, we're just so excited to be part of the community. We are so appreciative of Meyer. You know, their commitment to supporting local food producers is phenomenal and I have to give a huge shout out to Mary Kimbrough who's the store director here she personally selected my product from a pitch that we were able to do uh, back in last February um, and she knew we were here in Lake Orion she tasted our product she loved it and so I'm just very appreciative that she gave us this opportunity to have our product here and it means a ton to us as a small business that's a startup you know trying to get our product out there it's difficult you know it's a big world with all of the big names that are out there um, so to have this opportunity means a lot as the tour of the new store wound down store director mary kembro presented a check for ten thousand dollars to the village food pantry located at woodside bible church on the grounds of canterbury village i'm just uh super grateful this is exciting um to be able to partner with Meyer and they're super generous, uh, being able to have $10,000 to purchase food so that we can actually help people in need, help people that are hungry. Um, you know, we're seeing an increasing uh, need for people uh, needing food in, in our area and the surrounding area, and so this is definitely going to help that. Um, we are so thankful for that as the Village Food Pantry. So. On Thursday, January 26th, the store opened its doors to the public at 6 a.m. Later that morning, Meyer representatives gathered at the rear of the store to celebrate the occasion with a ribbon cutting ceremony. They were joined by Meyer co-chair and CEO Hank Meyer, the grandson of Hendrick Meyer, who founded the supermarket chain in 1934. Grand openings are always a thrill, but for the last 60 years, the main stores we've been opening have been our big Meyer super centers for lack of a better term and at the same time that we love that format and having everything under one roof we also recognize that people want their groceries conveniently and it's hard to put those big stores that close together and really serve everybody so this is a new in many ways a return to our roots of a predominantly food store 
but with a spectacular grocery and pharmacy and assortment that we think people will love and that will be more convenient to shop for a lot of our customers than our big stores are. The new Lake Orion store is one of more than 240 stores located in six states, with approximately half located in Michigan. Headquartered in Walker, Michigan, near Grand Rapids, the chain pioneered the concept of super centers, combining groceries, clothing, hardware, and more. For more information, you can call 877-363-4537 or visit Meyer.com. The Orion Township Board of Trustees has undergone a few changes over the past several months, the most recent of which saw a longtime business leader filling a vacancy on the board. In 2022, Orion Township Treasurer Donnie Steele announced her candidacy for state representative for the 54th district, which meant she would have to step down from her position as treasurer. After winning the election in November, Steele attended her final board meeting on December 19th. Appointed to fill the vacancy was trustee Kim Urbanowski, which meant her seat on the board needed to be filled. After going through numerous applications, the board selected longtime local businessman Matt Pfeiffer, who was sworn in during the meeting on January 17th. I do solemnly swear or affirm. I do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of this state. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of Orion Township Trustee. Of Orion Township Trustee. In Oakland County. In Oakland County. State of Michigan. State of Michigan. According to the very best of my ability. According to the very best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, I knew the opening was coming up. Obviously, I work closely with all of them anyway. And so um, I knew the opening was coming up. And, uh, you know, I've thought a long time about uh, getting more involved in a leadership role at the township. And so uh, this was just really good timing. Um, I like the fact that it's a, uh, it's a two-year uh, window or a little less, so it gives me a chance to really make sure I'm well suited to it. Um, but uh, uh, my hope is that it's going to be a, a great thing for me and hopefully good for the board and for the township. And uh, I hope to stay involved uh, at that level uh, or um, at some level going forward. Pfeiffer was born and raised in Lake Orion and purchased Northern Wholesale Flooring in 2004. The business has changed locations a few times over the past decade but is currently located on Indian Wood Road near M24. Pfeiffer has also been the force behind numerous charitable efforts in the community, including Real Men of Orion campaign and the Operation Warm Coat Drive. This is the first time he'll serve the community as government official. Yeah, I, w I was born and raised in uh, Keatington. Uh, um, uh, from what I've been told, we are the 12th house built in the first Keatington, so in sub one over on Walmsley Circle. And so I grew up there. Um, and uh, I, I obviously, uh, you know, went to all the schools here, went to Weber, went to what used to be Junior High West, went to the, uh, the Cirque building now, but uh, that was our high school at the time. And, uh, and then when I, I went out and traveled a lot and did some things for a few years, but um, when I had kids, I came back to raise them here. So my kids went through all the uh, schools here as well. And, uh, you know, my son graduated 30 years uh, to the day after me and my daughter, uh, 31, uh, uh, so that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, I just, it, there's no better place to raise a family, as far as I'm concerned, so uh, I, I love the community, and, um, and being able to uh, be from here and have them be from here, I think is, um, it's an honor. It's a, it's a, it's a really uh, unique place in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Matt Pfeiffer will serve for the remainder of Urbanowski's term, which ends in 2024. He told us he plans on running for re-election when the time comes. It is sad that Michigan has four seasons, summer, fall, winter, and pothole season. One of the worst roads in Lake Orion has claimed its share of tires over the years, but there's good news and bad news. The good news is repairs are coming. The bad news, they won't happen for at least a year. Owen TV's Joe Johnson has the story. Anyone who has driven on Silver Bell Road over the past decade will agree that it's like driving on the moon. The crumbling road is heavily used by employees of the GM Orient assembly plant, trucks stopping by the waste management landfill, and shoppers heading to Great Lakes Crossing or the retail stores located along Brown Road. If you've dodged potholes or just flat out avoided Silver Bell, well, there's good news on the horizon. 
Orion Township has been awarded $7 million by the U.S. House Appropriations Committee to go towards the rehabilitation of 2.6 miles of roads that include Silver Bell, Giddings, and Brown Road. When General Motors announced a $4 billion investment in the GM Orion assembly plan at the beginning of 2022, there was an urgency to improve the infrastructure surrounding the plant. Uh, we went to work um, talking to anybody that would listen to us at MDOT, at the Road Commission, state legislature, at appropriations, the governor's office, the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, and then in, in uh, D.C., our congressional representative, uh, Alyssa Slotkin. So uh, we kind of took our show on the road, if you will, and pitched the issue. Um, we, we're going to have this beautiful state-of-the-art automotive production facility, one of the most high-tech on planet Earth, and the infrastructure around the facility is garbage. Um, and so we are super excited that um, we were recommended. Uh, Congresswoman Slotkin received 90 community funding project requests from all the different communities that she represented. Uh, she's moving to a different district now. Um, and of that, she got to submit 15 for funding. And of the 15, we were one of the 15, we were the only one that was recommended to be fully funded. We asked for $7 million. They're funding us for $7 million, which is awesome. Uh, and it was by far the largest, I think, more than double the next Request so I mean most of these requests were a couple hundred thousand ours was seven million so we are excited The seven million dollars received from the community project funding program brings the total to over 12 million dollars in funds to repair the roads owned and maintained by Oakland County Township Supervisor Chris Barnett told us he's seeking additional funding to bring the total closer to 20 million dollars Barnett added that it's the township and the county who are responsible for maintaining the infrastructure, not the businesses themselves. These improvements are meant to lure businesses to invest in Orion Township. That was part of the incentives that were given to GM to put this $7 billion investment in the state of Michigan. So, you know, some people call it corporate welfare. I call it smart business. I mean, we were competing with other, other states for these thousands and thousands of jobs and billions of dollars in investment. And what we're giving them is the same thing we've, tax breaks we've, we've given to other uh, manufacturers in our community in the decade I've been here. Completely legal, completely above board, um, existing law that existed long before GM announced this investment. So they're getting a tax break for 12 years. Um, and they expect that the community that they're coming to is gonna have the infrastructure required to support them. That's the bottom line. What about waste management? You know, a lot of people point fingers at their trucks uh, utilizing Silver Bell. Where were they? Yeah, so, so waste, we have an interesting arrangement with waste management. That we receive a percentage of their tipping fees. We receive 5% of their tipping fees. So whatever uh, revenue they generate, 5% comes back to the township. It's used for capital improvement. Those are the monies that we use to build Wildwood Amphitheater. Um, some of the facility here was funded through the waste management fee. Um, so we already do receive revenue from them outside of the regular property taxes that they pay. Um, again, I think it's um, not their job to necessarily, their job is to maintain their site, make sure they're following the laws. Um, the roads that lead up to it that they don't own, it's hard to ask a company to invest into something they don't own. The roads are owned by the county. So um, they're great partners as well, and we do generate revenue from them, and we use for great community projects, but roads are not one of them. The Road Commission of Oakland County will begin work on the project in 2024. The new roads will have to withstand the weight of 3,000 commercial trucks and 18,000 vehicles per day. Sewers, traffic signals, and crosswalks will be updated, and over 18,000 feet of safety paths will be created. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to visit orientownship.org for contact information. In Orient Township, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. Thanks, Joe. Let's hope those repairs take place soon. The Lake Orion Police Department works hard at forming a bond with the community, especially the young ones who may grow up to be the police officers of the future. Fundraisers help the department host annual programs, including Shop with a Hero and a night of fun and games called Kids and Cops. On the evening of Friday, January 13th, Police officers of Lake Orion Village Police Department and children of the area met for two hours of rambunctious play inside Blanche Sims Elementary. This is the first school, uh, first kids and cops of the school year and the first one we've done in four years since COVID. Um, 
think I have 22 officers on hand. We're going to be playing basketball, Phil hockey, <laughs> Elmo here, uh, doing a lot of different things. Um, we have pizza. We're got, we have almost 60 pizzas coming from Hungry Howie's and Sick Pizza. Um, we're going to feed the kids. Hopefully a couple slices per, you know, that type of thing and make it through. But all this within two hours. The biggest thing we want to do is have that relationship with the kids. We don't want the kids to have a fear of us. So we want the kids to be able to approach us at any time, just like they're approaching Elmo at any time. Um, we want them to approach us and be comfortable enough to talk to us at any time for any reason. And that type of thing. For us as officers, it's fun to have fun with the kids. You know, this is our freedom or our relaxed period that we have because we get to get to know the kids and have fun with the kids. So. Principal Ken Noose is very excited for the kids and police to meet and build relationships. Oh, it's just very exciting. You know, we want to give kids opportunities to be involved with the school beyond the school day. And our partnership with the Lake Orion Village Police Department is, is just perfect because they get to build a relationship not only with school, but with the police officers at the same time. Anything they want to do uh, to have fun, and hopefully while they're doing that, they can build relationships with friends, uh, maybe friends they don't see all the time in school, but also our, our local uh, heroes, our police officers. Being such a lengthy tradition, and a fun one, the Lake Orion Police Department has two more visits planned, February 10th and March 10th. That's right, we move to our new building next year, and uh, I hope we can continue this wonderful event uh, in our new building, in the new Blanche Sims. Our gym will be a little bit bigger, the hallways will be a little bit bigger, so it offers, uh, offers us uh, a bigger opportunity. I'm going to say it's been about 12, 20 or 30 years that it's gone through. There was a period of time there we didn't have it because it was at the Boys and Girls Club. Then we moved it over to the Eamon Center, and now we moved it here to Blanche Sims. Um, and next year, I guess we're moving it to the new Blanche Sims. So. The Lake Orion Public Library hosts events throughout the year that help make reading fun for young and old readers alike. But many of these programs wouldn't be possible without the support of a local nonprofit organization. On Tuesday, January 17th, the Friends of the Orion Library kicked off their first used book sale of the year. Friends members and teachers got their first crack at the books, videos, and even CDs on Tuesday. Then the book sale opened to the general public on Wednesday when shoppers could find incredible deals. Well, we try not to turn anything away. All of the books are donated by the fine citizens of Orion and the neighborhoods around. Uh, we have tubs out there that we collect books every day. They, anyone can, wants to donate used books of any kind. Uh, we prefer not encyclopedias, uh, dictionaries, things of that nature because it's it, it, because of the computer age we live in, a lot of that information is available other ways. But we try to take almost anything that somebody else will give us 50 cents for or a dollar for that when we have these sales. The Friends Group holds three book sales per year and raises approximately $4,500 per event. When you add the proceeds from their holiday basket silent auction, the nonprofit organization can donate as much as $20,000 to the library each year. We're told the group presented a check for $40,000 to the library in 2022. That money, anything they raise from friends' book sales, they have the basket auction, anything like that, that money gets funneled back to the library, and then that money is able to be used for programming, um, special events that we hold. Summer Reading Kickoff is our biggest event of the year. Usually we get about a thousand people to kick off summer reading, so we couldn't do a lot of the things we do without the friends of the library. The Friends Use book sale concluded on January 21st with Bag Day. For $5, visitors received a bag that they filled with as many books as they could carry. The next book sale is scheduled to kick off on Tuesday, May 16th, and will run through May 20th. For more information, visit orionlibrary.org slash friends. You can also find them on Facebook. It's the biggest bargain in the world. <laughs> and finally, imagine asking your teenager to give up their cell phone for an entire day. Well, not only did high school students do it willingly, they did it for a great cause. Nicole Jedlicki was at the 8th Annual Sellout for Soldiers event and brings us the story. Lake Orion's 8th Annual Sellout for Soldiers happened Friday, January 13th. Students voluntarily gave up their phones for the day to help support the soldiers who serve our country. So we're really excited. Today was a fantastic morning. Um, this is the eighth year we've been able to sell out for soldiers here at Lake Orion High School. Uh, it started a couple years ago. Mr. Weber actually came up with the idea 
and we've kind of built on it, grown on it since then. Um, so the leadership class really takes a lot of onus in it. We're really excited every day when we get to have this really cool, unique thing. After first hour, students headed down to the field house where the Heroes Assembly took place for the third year. Heroes from around our community, staff, and students played three sets of volleyball. Uh, the, the experience here was awesome. I, I got to experience this for the first time last year. It was a really good time and it seemed like it even got better since last year. Uh, the energy in here, I think we blew the roof off this place. It was just a really good time for everybody. So transitioning from getting to sit in the bleachers and watch sell out, and actually this year coming back and getting to be a part of it was an awesome, amazing opportunity. It definitely changed your perspective once you come back. It's definitely, um, what's the word I'm looking for, but just, it's cool to see now everyone's cheering you on and you're getting to basically feel the community supports you in a more direct way. Oh, absolutely. And it shows that you guys actually care. I mean, nowadays that's one thing that everybody is on all day. Every day they're on their phones. And for you guys to be able to sacrifice that, not only for one hour or like a sem or half the day, it's the whole day you guys are sacrificing that for us. So we really appreciate it. It shows your support and we, we love to see it. From the high school, I'm Nicole Judlicki reporting for ONTV News. Thanks, Nicole. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ONTV News. On behalf of the hardworking ONTV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. And I'm Marco Ifrady. Thanks for watching.